Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here. Coming out with a quick video today about how you can speed up your real estate photography. So these are five areas to focus on if you want to improve your, you know, timeliness of shooting on site, timeliness of delivery, and just overall efficiency, which I think is important for any business, especially a creative one that also has some strict timelines to keep. So let's get into it. Number one, this one might seem crazy to everyone, especially if you have been in, you know, other forms of photography where you would rely on raw and then to hear me say that number one, you should shoot in JPEG for your real estate photography. So why is that? I have a couple reasons that I think are good. Uh, it's faster transfers to your outside editors if you use them. Uh, less procedures to completions and then less storage is a factor. So if you're not always keeping uh, CR2 files, let's say in the case of a Canon, they are much bigger than your JPEGs. When you are using the JPEGs that come out of the camera, you get a more natural exposure curve that is less, uh, you know, adjusted the way we are sometimes inclined to do when you're preparing your JPEGs for HDR. And then, you know, this kind of goes against the less storage, but I still shoot CR2 as backups. Uh, so those, you know, stay on my card. I download them, have them if I need. Let's say that my JPEG images for some reason didn't catch anywhere near the range of exposure I needed or color. Uh, I do have a fallback, but you can safely remove those from your workflow to speed up time. And then step number two, prioritize. So, you know, don't waste shots in unimportant areas. Um, have a good idea of what you need to focus on and what's less important about this particular property that you should not spend too much time photographing. So, you know, that would be focus on, uh, focusing on the highest value areas of the home or property and you should ask your realtor if you're unsure what those might be. Typically it is, you know, the kitchen, the ensuite bathroom for a primary bedroom, um, that kind of thing. Another thing I like to do is prioritize my time on site. I know that if I spend an extra one minute taking a shot again, it is probably saving me time if I'm trying to fix a broken, a partly broken shot uh, on the computer. So get it right on site or spend a bit more time in the edit. If you're sending to outsource editors, maybe that doesn't matter to you, but uh, it's a consideration and a place you can optimize your workflows. And again, sending too many photos isn't always helpful. So, you know, I know realtors don't like to have to sort through photos. Let's say you did a big property and you might have finished with 120 you want to send them, which, you know, is a gigantic number when you can really only list, I think, you know, in my area, it's about 45 at a time on, on the websites. So you are creating a whole new world of work for them to have to cut down by a third the number of photos you've sent. So the earlier in the process you can cut down your photos, the better because the less work is expended on things you won't use. Um, so yeah, again, prioritizing. Just do what's needed and less of what's not. So step number three, this one's a big one for me. Uh, I think not everyone's gonna like it, but it is pivotal to my workflow and the success of my business. So batch editing, and you can develop to just speed up every little aspect of what you do. So batch edit systems are key. That might mean HDR and HDR can get a lot of flack, but just so you know, every picture I've been showing you so far uh, here has been HDR batch edited with a single kind of cleanup preset I apply at the end. So I don't know, have you noticed? Do these look like um, flambient? Do they look like HDR? Batch editing systems are key. So another thing good about batch editing is that, you know, I look at outsourcing websites and outsourcing the photo editing and all of that as, as a source of this death from 10,000 paper cuts kind of thing. Like they seem like small, small costs when you're being told 50 cents a dollar per photo, but you can drastically increase the profitability of your business. And, uh, the time you spend doing your work, if you can eliminate some of these superfluous steps. Uh, and I feel like outsourcing your editing is one of those. Another thing I use is pre-formatted export presets out of Lightroom. So when I know that a set or a collection of photos is completed from a shoot that day, uh, I hit export and then I have two real estate export presets. It gives them appropriate naming, appropriate sizing. Uh, it sends them into two separate folders and that would be uh, as most real estate photographers do uh, print and a web photo version 
that I send along. So, you know, that's already taken care of. I know that I don't have to accidentally uh, correct a step that I might have misclicked when I'm exporting because I have this preset that does it for me. And I think that that is uh, a good thing that if you don't have, you should definitely set up. If you want to learn more about how I do my real estate photo editing, especially doing it all myself, no outsource editors, uh, I'd be happy to share that with you. I'm trying to put a little presentation together of the custom camera controller I've built. So make sure to hit the like button uh, and subscribe to let me know that you want to see more. So number four, this one probably equally controversial to saying you should try HDR and that is your camera is smarter than you and a little bit faster sometimes too. So some of the things you can do uh, to leverage your camera's abilities, after all, we are paying for high level professional equipment and sometimes we are following back on some of the more simple rudimentary methods of applying that technology. So using your camera capabilities might mean a, a number of things could be auto white balance, which I do like to use. My Canon camera has an auto white balance with white priority. That means when it finds white in a scene, it will try and, and make it show as white instead of uh, having too much ambient fall on it, which as you know, sometimes we don't want the ambient color in real estate photography that can come from tungsten lights, for instance. So Canon does have a built-in way to get around that if you're willing to use its auto white balance. And of course, to fully benefit from that, you should be shooting in the JPEGs. Um, some other camera capabilities, uh, you know, notably with my Canon 5D Mark IV and the 600 EXRT flashes are camera groups with ETTL control. So one way I use that with real estate photography is let's say that I have a flash on my camera and then I am walking around with a flash, uh, let's say in the uh, walk-in closet in, in the back depth of the, the room I'm shooting. I can set my flashes to automatically balance their output. It will try to match the exposure for both of those zones that I've basically created by having a flash there and uh, and it will try to automatically match the flash output so that I get a even exposure in both those rooms and and that's that's a superpower if you ask me to be able to use more flashes and have it even and equalize itself with with minimal effort this is kind of a big thing in in real estate photography so that's definitely something you want to take take advantage of so having a smart camera and camera controller and flashes in some cases uh, can be a huge benefit and time save. So similar to tip number three about batch editing and systems is um, anything you find yourself doing a thousand times, that is a perfect area to focus your improvements on. Since a small adjustment in this area, you know, however small basically can, can be a thousand times more potent because you do this action a thousand times right? Does that make sense to you? I don't know. I think it makes sense to me. Okay. And last one is just working hard to make your repeat clients because the more you work together, the easier every project uh, just gets, uh, you know, between your communication and just readiness of the properties and all that, um, having and keeping your regular clients happy is one of the number one things you should do for an efficient real estate photo business. Anyways, that's all for this quick real estate photography how-to. I hope it was helpful. We went over a few points. Some of them I don't think you will have heard too much, but uh, leave a comment, questions you may have below. Thanks for watching and we'll catch up with you soon.